Hello, everyone. This is uh, sort of a dissertation on the M60 series of main battle tank. The M60 series of design proved to be one of the most successful Western tank designs for the latter half of the 20th century. In U.S. service, it was considered a venerable and generally reliable tank design, which was a workhorse for its many decades of service. However, this generally positive impression overlooks the series of severe teething issues with the M60 upon entering its introduction, some of which would be retained throughout its service life, as well as a series of faults which would gradually emerge as the M60's contemporaries became more lethal. While this won't provide a comprehensive review of all issues that the M60 series suffered, hopefully this provides some insight into the characteristics of the type that are not often discussed. Introduced in 1959 and type classified as Tank Medium M60, notably being the last such vehicle in U.S. service to be given the medium designation. The M60 boasted a major leap in capability over the legacy M48 series, housing an exceptionally potent 105mm M68 cannon, a license-based derivative of the Royal Ordnance L7, with a few domestic improvements being made to improve the design, but otherwise mostly the same. Despite the United States Army experimenting with a variety of stabilization systems on the M46, M47, and M48 tanks, the M60 would not enter service with any stabilization system at all, which left it behind the curve when compared to the dual-axis stabilizers then in service on a range of AFEs, including the certain T-54s and T-55s. It wouldn't be until 1974, some 15 years after the M60 entered service, when the M60 would receive a stopgap stabilization system, aptly named the Add-on Stabilizer, or AOS. Firepower and fire control were not all lackluster, however, and at the end of its time of introduction, the 105mm was still one of the most potent tank cannons anywhere in the world, capable of firing a wide range of anti-armor and multi-purpose ammunition. It was with the M68 cannon that the United States would first introduce its own Sabo stabilized projectile, the M735, and later would introduce the world's first monoblock depleted uranium penetrator, the M774, onto M60s and M1s. By the time the M60 had surpassed 17 years of service, he was also being fitted with a new laser rangefinder, the ANGVS-5, and a cutting-edge thermal tank site, aptly designated the ANGVS-2, with both being slave to a solid-state ballistic computer. While the M60 was not the first tank with a laser rangefinder, as indeed the Soviets held a near monopoly on the technology at this point in time, the M60 did have the distinction of being the first serviced main battle tank with a thermal imager and solid-state ballistic computer. As far as armor was concerned, the M60 was no slouch. Armor to stop 100mm armor-piercing projectiles at 1500 yards, a feat it proved suitable to achieve. And in a few years, the M60 was destined to receive a new silicus cord armor, which would protect the M60 from common chemical effect rounds then in service. However, there was only one major issue with this, and that is despite being developed in 1952, the silicus cord armor never entered service, even though the M60 was designed with the intent of mounting it onto its hull and to an improved needle nose turret, which is where you get the distinctive sharper shapes of the M60 compared to the M48. The rationale for rejecting the silicus cord armor was that repeated non-penetrating strikes from large caliber projectiles would cause major damage to the silicus array, even when protected by a one-inch steel skin, as they called it. Additionally, it was seen as more expedient to produce the existing homogeneous hulls and turrets without having to rely on the singular New Jersey plant that was capable of producing the silicus cord armor, which was prior to 1960. Therefore, M60s never received this approved armor, which left the series tenuously resilient to then current chemical effect munitions, as would be demonstrated in the 1973 Yom Kippur War, where M60s suffered severe losses during IDF offensives to Egyptian Malipta and RPG fire. Indeed, while the M60's protection against kinetic 85, 100, and 122mm threats was still proving reasonably strong, newer generations of ammunition, such as the 3BM4, which was fired from the 115mm cannon, then in service, or the PG-7VM, 
and the 9M113 Concours, which would proliferate shortly after the Yom Kippur War, would entirely outmode the M60A1's protection and left the series only protected against second-rate weapons for the remainder of its service life. Casualties suffered from knocked-out tanks were also disconcertingly high. A report from the U.S. Army Research Institute indicated that under ideal circumstances, the crew mean escape times were 24.1 seconds, whereas under the worst conditions, this rose to 59.2 seconds. This wasn't exceptionally high for the time, but it did mean that in the event of ammunition in the hull or turret being struck, it was unlikely that the turret crew would survive either such event, especially if the turret was oriented in such a way where the whole ammunition blocked access to the driver's escape hatch. The height of the turret floor to the roof combined with the awkward functionality of the turret hatches made it further difficult to evacuate any wounded crew from the turret, especially if they had their NBC gear on. NBC being Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical Protection Gear. These were issues that the Army would try to rectify by improving access to the turret hatches, but these would never be fully amended by the time that the M60A3 was being retired from service. There was another cause of the high rate of casualties among M60 crews that was identified in the Yom Kippur War. Namely, this was the Mil H6083, a petroleum-based hydraulic fluid which was used in the M60's turret reverse system. Because of the time it took to escape from a stricken vehicle for the turret crew, perforation of the power traverse system could spew and ignite the flammable hydraulic fluid, which would cause horrific burn injuries to the turret crew, and in more severe cases, death. To the Army's credit, they recognized this issue as soon as experience was encountered in the Yom Kippur War, and developed a new fire-resistant hydraulic fluid designated Mil H46170, which greatly diminished the danger a hydraulic leak posed to the crews on current and future vehicle designs. Unfortunately, the new fluid was not adopted wholesale, and even by the time the Army was retiring its remaining M60s from service, some vehicles were still filled with the flammable OHT-type fluid. The overall mobility of the M60 at introduction was improved when compared to the earlier M48A1 and M48A2 types, making use of a powerful and efficient AVDS-1790-2A engine and a CD-850-6A powertrain. Originally, the M60 made use of a Chevron-style T97E2 track from the M48 series of tank, though experience showed that the M60 had unsatisfactory reliability regarding all of its automotive components. The AVDS-1790-2A proved to frequently fail, especially in dusty conditions, and was difficult to maintain even when performing nominally. And while most focus on reliability tends to be for the engine and the drivetrain, for most tanks, the M60 included, it was the suspension and track which were the most common point of failure. The T97E2 track proved to be wholly unsuitable for the mass of the M60, and was perhaps the most common point of failure for the tank spurring a replacement program which would manifest in the still unsatisfactory but generally improved T142 series of track. Likewise, the suspension arms, road wheels, and torsion bars were frequently breaking down and would have to be improved or strengthened throughout the service life of the M60 series, though never to a degree where the army was wholly content. Most of the aforementioned concerns of reliability were addressed to at least some extent by the Reliability Improvement for Selected Equipment Program, or RISE, which would induce a dozens of minor and major reliability or capability improvements to the M60, including the improved AVDS-1790-2C or 2D engines with more powerful 650 ampere generators, a revised T142 track type, and a new top-loading air cleaner to reduce dust ingestion for engine failures. After the RISE program, it can be argued the M60A1 and M60A3 tanks had finally matured into fully reliable and dependable tanks, with the service life and operational availability both increasing substantially as a result to these improvements. There were still unsatisfactory elements within the M60 design, but by this point the Army and Marine Corps were mostly content with the service the M60 series was providing. Ironically, it would be the AVDS-1790 2D engine, which initially proved so troublesome that would carry the M60's post-rise reputation of reliability 
into the 21st century with the United States, serving diligently as a sturdy and bulletproof power plant in the M88 series of armored recovery vehicles. The M60 series was a flawed and deeply troubled design at its onset, which would be plagued with numerous reliability and capability deficiencies years into its service. Yet over time, the M60 would mature into a thoroughly modern main battle tank with a vicious bite, diligent fire control system, and remarkably reliable power plant, which would close its service with the United States in Operation Desert Storm, where the Marines used thoroughly modernized M60A1 tanks to duke it out with Iraqi armor alongside its younger sibling, the M1 Abrams, and served with distinction in one of the harshest operational theaters the world over. Outside of the United States service, the M60 continues to soldier on in conflicts around the globe today, where it certainly has years of service left before it is regulated entirely to the annals of history. The M60 also serves as a case study in the development and improvement of armored fighting vehicles, as most new vehicles entering service are plagued with deficiencies. The M60 is by no means unique in this regard. But through the resilience of the men and women designing, iterating, and fighting in these machines has allowed the M60 to emerge as one of the most well-served tanks in American armored history.